Hey, did you know that connecting words are part of the marking criteria for fluency and coherence, which is 25% of your IELTS speaking mark? Let's go over some linking expressions now in this episode of Hacking IELTS. If you're joining us for the first time, I'm Chris, and this is a YouTube channel and a podcast helping new and intermediate IELTS test takers understand the exam and attain higher results. In this episode, we're going to look at linking expressions and why they are so critical for your speaking test. If you're new to the IELTS speaking test, this is the same exam for all students, whether they're taking the general test or the academic version. One important thing to note is that linking expressions should not be overused, and it's not the same as when you're doing writing, where you need to show a range and show some flexibility. So, in other words, you can repeat the linking words. It's just really important that you know how to use these words in conversation so that there's a flow to what you're saying and that you're not speaking in a formal manner, which ends up sounding really robotic or wooden. Let's look and listen to a couple examples now to see what works and what doesn't. Question, do you like to exercise? Yes, I do. I love functional training, as well as weightlifting and even some high-intensity training. In this example, we wouldn't use for example. This type of sentence discusses everyday activities and things that we like to do on an ongoing basis. Let's go to another example now. Question, do you think fast food is bad for you? Answer, yes, absolutely. If we eat junk food too often, it may cause problems in the future, such as diabetes, or even worse, heart disease. Junk food can also lead to obesity, which is problematic for many people these days. Here, we can use such as or for example, because the content is definitely more serious and it's not a regular daily topic of discussion. Also keep in mind that we don't use connectors such as furthermore, moreover, or in addition in our regular conversation. Instead, we typically use also or and. If you're given a question that refers to the past, present, or the future, then you'll need to use time phrases. Let's look at an example now together. Question, do kids these days play similar games today that they played in the past? Answer, no, I don't think that they do. Before, they used to play outside and they were happy to play games such as tag or hide and go seek. But these days, kids are always online, playing video games like Black Ops, or watching YouTube channels. Okay, in this example, we can see that the answer contains time phrases for both the past and the present. When speaking about the past, the speaker uses the word before. And then when discussing the present, the speaker uses the expression these days. Okay, let's go over some common mistakes with linking expressions for the speaking test. Question, do you like going out on the weekends? Answer, yes, of course. First of all, I like to go with my friends on Friday nights to watch a movie. Second, I like to hit the mall on Saturday mornings and meet my friends for coffee. Finally, I like to wind down the weekend by taking a walk in the park on Saturday night. Can you see how this method of linking is way too formal? It's just not appropriate, and it's not going to help you achieve a high score on your speaking test. Let's look at a much better response to the question of going out on the weekends. Question, do you like going out on weekends? Answer, yes, of course. To kick off the weekend, I like to go on Friday nights with my friends and catch a movie. I also like to hit the mall on Saturday mornings and meet my friends over coffee. And I guess I find taking walks on Saturday nights a great way to wind down the weekends. As you can hear, 
this answer was way more natural, and it's definitely going to be marked higher for the speaking test. It's less rigid, and the linking words are used appropriately. Hey, what do you think now about looking at some tips for linking expressions? Does that sound like a good idea to you? Great. Let's look at a few of them together now. Tip number one. Remember that linking words are part of the criterion for fluency and coherence, which makes up 25% of your speaking marks. Tip number two. Linking expressions are used naturally, not formally, for the speaking test. Remember, your writing must be formal, not your speaking. Tip number three. Remember that linking expressions for speaking are just a way to help the listener understand you better. No more, no less. Tip number four. You're not going to get a higher score because you used a range of linking expressions. In other words, do not, I repeat, do not try to rattle off as many different linking expressions as possible. Tip number five. Remember to only use the word like in speaking when giving examples. And always avoid using it for task one and task two writing. It's far too casual for the writing tasks. Tip number six. The most common linking words for speaking are as follows. Like, also, because, but, and. Tip number seven. When it comes to the speaking test, you don't need to worry about repeating the linking expressions that you've used. This is much more of an issue when it comes to the writing tasks for the exam. And finally, tip number eight. Don't use formal linking words regarding questions about yourself and your life. You'll sound like a robot, sound wooden, and will just sound downright weird to the examiner. Oh, and another tip that goes along with this is to use contractions when speaking, but definitely avoid contractions for your formal writing. When we're speaking in everyday English, we use words like can't, don't, wouldn't, shouldn't. You get the idea. However, when you get to the writing tasks, you need to be as formal as possible and should avoid contractions like the plague. These types of words have no business being anywhere near your writing tasks. And the same thing applies to using the personal pronoun I in your writing. But let's save this for another episode. Okay guys, this wraps up things for this week. Hey, did this help you out? Let me know by giving it a like and subscribe. See links to our courses in the description for this week's show. If you're on the go, you can get the same content in our podcast. Take care guys and catch you in the next one.